Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. This will be a video for Pennsylvania, but I think all of you should take note of what's occurring because there is a bad, bad, quite malignant cancer growing nationwide, and that is a ridiculous amount of state legislators now coming up with assault weapon bans as their next step in civilian disarmament. As a matter of fact, there appears to be an epidemic of it, in fact, perhaps even a pandemic of it right now, and maybe we should just shut the whole country down again. We've already had to talk about Virginia. We've already had to talk about Minnesota. We've already had to talk about Colorado, and now we're going to talk about Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania, as a person who had one of these things shoved down our throats a year ago, let me give you some advice. Stock up now. So today, let's spend a few minutes. Let's get everyone in Pennsylvania educated and let's talk about Pennsylvania hops aboard the assault weapon ban bandwagon. Okay, Pennsylvania, this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about House Bill 336. Now, House Bill 336 was actually introduced last year in your legislative session, was a carryover bill to this year's legislative session, and now has been significantly amended effective February 4th of 2024. Now, we're going to break down the House and Senate numbers in a few moments here to figure out what's the likelihood of this occurring. But what we want to do first is get you educated on two things. Number one, what activity would actually be prohibited if this bill became law? And then number two, what firearms would actually be banned if this bill became law? So House Bill 336, if enacted into legislation, would make the following unlawful. Except as provided in subsection B, a person may not, one, possess, use, control, sell, deliver, transfer, or manufacture an assault weapon. Whoa, did that say possess or own? It sure did. Now, they said there were some exceptions in subsection B, and the good news, Pennsylvania, is one of those exceptions is all of you who currently do own a firearm of such platform. The bill's language actually reads that this would be an exemption to the statute. A person lawfully owning or otherwise possessing an assault weapon before the effective date of this section. And of course, the effective date, Pennsylvania, would be 60 days after your governor signs it. So once again, stock up now. Now, the second thing you want to know is, okay, what actually constitutes an assault weapon? Oh, now, I know that many of you are going to freak out because I even used the term assault weapon to begin with. I know, I know, I hear it all the time. And is there really such thing as an assault weapon? Not really. Is there going to be in Pennsylvania if uh, House Bill 336 gets signed by your governor? Yes, there will be. As a matter of fact, you will have a statutorily defined assault weapon. And it's going to include a lot more than what was in the original version of this bill. Because the 2023 version of this bill really just listed a bunch of makes and models. The amendments that have just been adopted basically strikes all of that. And it now goes to what we call a single feature design ban. Okay, And what that really is, is they define a platform of a firearm. And you'll see how they do this in a moment. Then they say, and by the way, if it has any one of these other components to it, that means it's now an unlawful assault weapon. And of course, the components are stuff that you're going to find on these platforms of firearms anyways. So if you think it's just semi-automatic rifles, Pennsylvania, wrong. There's a lot more to it. And I'm going to show you. Okay, now, as far as rifles go, this is how the bill defines what's now a scary assault rifle. One, the firearm is a semi-automatic rifle that has the ability to accept a detachable magazine and has at least two of the following. And good news, Pennsylvania, at least two of the following, almost every other state that we've talked about is only one of the following. So a semi-automatic rifle capable of accepting a detachable magazine that has any two of the following. A, a folding or telescoping stock. B, a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. C, a bayonet mount. D, a flash suppressor or threaded barrel designed to accommodate a flash suppressor. E, a grenade launcher. Now, with the exception of the grenade launcher and the bayonet mount, uh, we can see that just about any of those other items are actually commonly found on this platform of firearms. So yeah, you're talking about a very broad brush that this legislation covers, but it's broader than that, Pennsylvania, because there's also 
pistols and shotguns that would be banned under this legislation as well. Banned pistols now would be defined as any firearm which the firearm is a semi-automatic pistol that has the ability to accept a detachable magazine and it has at least two of the following. A, an ammunition magazine that attaches to the pistol outside of the pistol grip. B, a threaded barrel capable of accepting a barrel extender, flash suppressor, forward hand grip, or silencer. C, a shroud that is attached to or partially or completely encircles the barrel and that permits the shooter to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned. D, a manufactured weight of 50 ounces or more when the pistol is unloaded. E, a semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm. And I honestly do not even know what that last one means. Interestingly, much of that other language, if you watch the videos about Colorado and Minnesota, you will see like, oh wow, that's some pretty similar language because they're all cutting and pasting this nationwide. Oh, and then there were shotguns too, right? Yes, how would this bill, if enacted into law, define now a scary assault shotgun? As follows. The firearm is a semi-automatic shotgun that has at least two of the following. A, a folding or telescoping stock. B, a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. C, a fixed magazine capacity in excess of five rounds. D, an ability to accept a detachable magazine. And then the statute comes with perhaps the most confusing and perplexing portion, which be a combination of parts that apparently could also constitute a now banned and scary assault weapon. In Pennsylvania, the bill's language reads right now as follows. A part or combination of parts designed or intended to convert a firearm into an assault weapon or any combination of parts from which an assault weapon may be rapidly assembled if those parts are in the possession or under the control of the same person. This paragraph shall not apply to unassembled parts or a combination of parts possessed by a dealer licensed under this chapter or a person employed by that dealer which are used to repair or service a lawfully possessed firearm. And then just to put a little icing on the cake, this bill, if enacted in the legislation, also comes with a magazine ban. That's right, any magazine which holds more than 10 rounds would also be banned under Pennsylvania law with the same grandfathering provision. Stock up now. Now the $64,000 question, Pennsylvania, is what is the likelihood that this actually comes to fruition and makes it to your governor's desk? Well, currently, the Democratic Party does control the House, but only by one vote, and does have the governor's mansion. The Republicans have a six-vote majority in the Senate. So the mathematical probability of this passing out of both houses and making it to the governor's desk, this legislation is pretty remote. But let me remind you about something that happened here in Washington State starting eight years ago. Because it wasn't on the first, the second, or the third attempt, but it was on the seventh attempt. You see, the disturbing trend that we're seeing here is that we're seeing a lot of state legislatures suddenly try to get an assault weapon ban in before what they know is inevitably coming in the summer of 2025 when the United States Supreme Court definitively rules these as unconstitutional. They want this for two reasons. Number one, they want to gain political points with their base. And number two, candidly, they just don't really like some of the citizens that reside in that state. The House bill, once again, is House Bill 336. We'll link it up down below Pennsylvania so that you can geek out on it for yourself. If you got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information, it's also down there in the description box. And then finally, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, Thanks for watching. Stay safe.